Hey there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with yet another 100% achievement guide. And this time we are getting it all in the massively chilled but very good Life of Fly. Now this game was developed and published by EpiXR Games and is available to you for just £12.49. Now there's not a lot to say about the game other than those who have played the equally chilled and great airy series, the one with the bird and, you know, you collect feathers and stuff. Well, this will have basically a very, very similar feeling as it is effectively that with some more storytelling and we collect balls of light to finish each level. Also, if you're wondering about the music sounding the same as the previous games, you would be absolutely right. But it is even easier than the airy games in my opinion. So achievements wise, let's just say a blind man with no hands and one testicle. I don't know why one testicle, but just because. But even they could finish the game. <laughs> so all we need to do is basically finish each level and the lovely 1000 out of 1000 is ours. Now the game is chilled, slow paced, so you should have no worries keeping up with where I'm at and we can get it done in around 40 to 45 minutes. Be aware though, this guide will contain some kind of fly jokes or bad jokes related to said game. So if everyone's happy, well, let's go ahead and do this thing then. So we have got... 12 levels to get through and each one automatically starts as we finish the other the, the writing is basically the same this is basically airy with a fly instead so let's uh, start up the first level the aware fly and the first ball of light you can have a sort of have a look at the controls go into your settings and uh, st mess around with the inverted controls if that's what you prefer but the first ball of light is basically straight in front of us as we start next to this horse statue. And then when we grab that, turn directly to your right. Did you ever wonder what it would and like you are going to see it under this chair right now. And after you collect this one, if we fly through the chair, we're going to see it straight in front of us in the next doorway. Uh, just by this step ladder. Once you've grabbed this, if you turn right into the room, we're going to see the next ball of light on a computer chair. By the way, what's the difference between a bird and a fly? A bird can fly, but a fly can't bird. <laughs> Hilarious. So when we grab this then, turn directly around, and you're going to see the next ball of light next to this open chest of drawers. Oh yes, we've already started. So out of here, we're going to go head out of this room, Go to the left of the door and you can see it just in the doorway there. So grab this, turn to the right just a little bit, fly straight into the bathroom and you can see the next ball of light on top of the sink. I'm glad we have to go, don't go into the toilet this time for this one. Come out sm smelling like fly covered crap. And then what we can do here is just turn directly around and exit the bathroom and this time we're going to be heading left. and. Then, directly in front of us, you will see, just in the doorway, the next ball of light. And then from here, turn left, slightly left again, and you can see it just past the bike on this desk. So, grab this, turn left quite a ways, go onto the bed, and you can see it just viewing some ball of light pornography there on the laptop. From this one, turn left again, we're going to actually exit this bedroom now, and... Just past the door, you can see it straight in front of us. So continue going straight and then basically head back into the living room and you can see it just by the horse statue, just like the very first one we collected. So as you can probably tell, this game is already a lot easier. The rooms are a bit smaller and everything is just a bit more compact. So everything is easier than the airy games. So when we grab this one then, turn right and all the way right and this time we're going to be heading into the kitchen as you can see just in front of us the radiator and you'll see it right there on the table so go grab it so once you grab this turn directly to your left and we're going to see the next one on top of the toaster and the pot now, this would have made this game a lot more challenging if there was actually humans trying to smash us up and stuff. But maybe next time, eh, EpiXR? Maybe next time. Turn left from here, and the next one is going to be directly in front of us by the um, coffee machine. And that's the toaster, actually. 
And that will be your last one. Apparently, I don't know what a toaster looks like because I'm dull. But that's fine. So that's the end of the first level. So we should now get the achievement for completing said first level. And we can automatically start the opportunistic fly. So as you can see then, the first one is directly in front of us with the tiniest smidgen of a left. So we'll go ahead and collect that. The next one is also just down and directly in front of us. So let's go ahead and grab that one. Third one down again and directly in front of us. And the fourth one is just underneath the chair, just to the left, right there, so straight in front of us now. From here then, go up and to the left, and we're basically going on the table now. Don't go too far, because you end up sort of backwards. But there it is, just on the table here. And then go to the right, and you're going to see it just by this big old bike on the wall. I mean, they are fairly obvious where they are, but uh, with the lights, sometimes it can be a bit disorientating. Anyway, go to the right, sort of turn right around, and it is on the table next to this plant, right, Mia? And then just to the right, just a touch, the next one is on a chair. So from here then, just keep going straight and to the right a tiny bit. You can see it basically in the middle of the room. And go to the right again, it's on the table now. And go ahead straight in front of us, just on the desk with the uh, tail and the card machine. There it is. And from here, just go down a little bit and you can see it directly in front of us. So that will be number 12. Okay, then go to the right and sort of behind you and it is directly in front of us there. And then for the next one, turn to the right just a bit and it'll be on the table. From here, just go straight on. Also, what do fireflies like to eat in a restaurant? A light meal. Ah, get it, a light meal. Anyway, go left and it's going to be on this sort of shelf right here, the next one, number 16. And then just turn directly around to your left. It's going to be, again, just on top of this chair here. Oh, hilarious fly jokes. So from here, just go straight on. That's going to be number 18. And then directly in front of us is number 19. Number 20 is going to be literally directly in front of us. Again, like I said, a lot of them are obvious, but because of the white background and the white, everything's just bright and light, it can be a bit confusing sometimes. So uh, just go to the left and up, and it's going to be just here. There we go. And then if you go to the left, it's going to be on the table again. And this is one of those that can be tricky to see. And then just go straight in front of us on top of this pillow. That's number 23. And then go to the left, just under the table, number 24. Straight ahead of us is number 25. There's also a lot of dialogue and story happening as well, but um, I kind of took no notice, sorry. Um, <laughs> anyway, keep going straight ahead and just under this table, touch left, there it is, number 26. Just go to the right here, you could probably just see it in the doorway. This is going to be number 27. Directly in front of us by the door, number 28. I'm trying out new accents. Let's go to the left and up above the sink, just on top of the sink, you will see just about number 29. Turn directly around and it's going to be on top of the other sink, just by the sort of doorway. Again, it's another tricky one to see, but yeah, you'll get there eventually. So go straight ahead, and just to the left, you can see it, number 31, in the middle of the room here. Number 32 is to the left, and up above in these sort of kind of branch leaves looking kind of decorations. And number 33 is to the right, and it is going to be, you can probably just see it in the distance, in the leaves again. So that's going to be all 33. And there we go. So yeah, I might try out uh, some different accents in my next one, huh? Or am I not going to sound like an idiot? Yeah, I'll probably go with that one, actually, to be honest. 
So, that's the second level then. On to the third one, the Scared Fly. So, to start off then, you can see it a lot better than you could in the last level. Directly in front of us, that is the first one. And the second one, then just go to the right a little bit, and you're going to see it in the doorway. So, yes, as I mentioned as well, the music is exactly the same, or it seems to be, from the Airy game. So, well, at least this was an easy one music-wise to put together. Just copy and paste from the last one. Go left, and you can see number three just in the doorway. Past all these presents. Oh, I wonder what's in there. They're all the same size, so they're probably going to be... Probably going to be like lumps of coal. Kind of, I get that vibe where it's not going to be a happy ending. So there's number three. Number four is directly in front of us and just to the right, a smidge. And from here, go to the left. You're going to see it on the floor. It's going to be number five. There we go. Just go through the door here. And you're going to see it just to the right on top of uh, whatever that is, a shelf or whatever. That's going to be number six. Number seven, just to the left. So the next to this uh, baby chair and screen projector. And number eight is directly in front of us through the door. By the way, what do you call a fly that is ill? The flu. Ah! Super funny. <laughs> the Christ. Go to the left anyway and go through this doorway. Jesus, top jokes today. And you, again, just go through the next sort of doorway right here, or these prison gates, whatever, and you're going to see it in the distance. Oh, time to get some better jokes, I think. Got to gotta keep you guys around. There's number nine. Go straight through to the left, and you're going to see it clear as daylight. Kind of waiting for something to jump out for us. This is definitely a horror setting. No wonder you're scared fly. Anyway, go to the right. And you're going to see it, again, just directly in front of us. There was a bit of an edit there because I kept missing it somehow. I don't know how because you, there's only, you can go straight through it. Anyway, straight through the doorway is going to be number 12. Next to all these... Oh my god, what kind of room is this? Anyway, to the left, just a smidge, is going to be number 13. Just... Ignore the smell, ignore the dead bodies, that's fine, nothing sinister going on here, is it? Uh, turn basically directly around, and it's going to be in the middle of all these delicious looking dead bodies. And by delicious, I mean horrifying, of course. It wouldn't be any other way. Anyway, just keep going straight, and you're going to see number 15. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, we're definitely far away from Airy and having the uh, little bird princess, aren't we? Anyway, go through the next doorway here, and number 16 is going to be right in front of us. So from here, go straight on. That's number 17. Nice and easy, mate. And nothing else to do here except turn directly around. Basically, this level, we're going in a full circle. So we're going back through the door to get number 18. Back in the death room. Which is nice for this kind of game, isn't it? To the right, a smidge is number 19. Again, ignore the smell. It's fine. It's just gone off chicken. To the left and up, just a touch is number 20. Really badly gone off chicken, I'd assume. Um, if there's a room of hanging dead bodies, but anyway, we're out of here. So go through the door now, and that's going to be number 21. Number 22 is going to be directly in front of us on this table. Here we go, and then we're just going to go left. Just a smudge, a, a smudge, a smidge. We're going back through the doorway. So we're basically ending up with the room with the presence again. And you can see it directly in front of you there, number 23. And if there's hanging dead bodies, I do not want to know what's in those presents. Probably the genitals or something. Nice. So straight ahead is going to be number 24. Not nice if they've been sliced off you, though. 
I couldn't imagine it'd be nice anyway. Number 25, go through the doorway on the right. And once again, you're going to see it just directly in front of us. And this game, no, this game is easier than Aerie, but it seems to play a lot more slower. So it's more chilled, but you kind of want to get there. Come on! So there is number 25. Number 26 then is going to be, we're going to have to take a right here at the end of this kind of hallway type thing. And this one is a bit of a slow burner. And you're going to see it directly in front of us on top of the severed testicled presence. And that'll be the end of this level. But if it's not existing, then we're still dying. So welcome to the next level, the Envy Fly. This is a bit of this, these ones will hit you all at once, so let's get the joke out of the way quickly, shall we? So what do you call a fly without wings? A walk! Hey, Budum! Ah, oh, oh man, they're not gonna get any better, I promise. <laughs> so as we begin then, you can see it directly in front of you. This is a very small room, so we're gonna be left, right, and all over the show. The second one is just to the right, a smidge. Uh, so make sure to obviously be grabbing that next to the wall. And what we're going to do from here is turn to the left. And you're going to see it sort of the opposite side of the room. From here, it's just to the left a little bit by the window. Try not to burn your ass on the way down in the radiator. And to the left again, just a bit next to the door. I burnt my ass once. Really hurt. Really hurt. To the left again, a touch. To the opposite end again of the room. That's number six. Now from here, turn left again just a touch. And that's number seven. Number eight is going to be just under this desk, or the stool right here. And then number nine, if you go to the left and remain on the floor, it's going to be on this lovely looking carpet. Hmm. And from here, we need to basically just turn around so you can go either left or right. doesn't make a difference, but it's still on this carpet, so we need to be low down. There's that one. Number 11 is to the left and up on this, close to this desk. Make sure to grab that. And then you're going to go right on the desk, just underneath the lamp, or just close to it. Right a bit by the radio. That's number 13. Number 14 to the right a bit, just to the radiator. See, this is coming at you quicker than a, <laughs> than a goddamn jizz fest at another bukkake party. Man, what is my obsession with it? Anyway, turn directly around again. It's going to be on the window, on the desk that we just were. Really don't know my obsession with bukkake parties. I've never been to one. <laughs> anyway, go to the left, directly around again, and it's going to be basically by this bed. Number 16, and to the left, actually on the bed, which doesn't look like it's been washed for a couple of months. That's number 17. To the right a little bit is number 18. And to the right on the pillow this time is going to be number 19. It looks like he sleeps on cardboard. Directly in front of us, number 20. Number 21, just on the carpet again. Or the, the I don't know, it looks like a dead bloody thing to the right staying low down is going to be number 22 again on this blood soaked carpet and directly in front of us just behind this chair leg is going to be number 23 from here then go right and it's going to be by the side of the bed here we go as we can see it just by the radiator in between and number 25 is going to be directly behind us on the desk once again that's going to be 25 out of 25 and a nice, easy, chilled. But now we can actually get out of this highly furnished, beautiful looking, cardboard sleeping, blood soaked carpet room. Oh, I wonder what goes on in here. Death fest! Anyway, now we are on to the lonely fly. And now we're on to a nicer part of the house. This bloody beautiful mansion. So, as we begin then, the first one is directly in front of us. How many times have I said that? 
That's going to be in your dreams, me saying that. <laughs> Whoa. Anyway, second one is directly in front of us. <laughs> and guess what the third one is? That's right, it's directly in front of us again. Just a little bit lower this time. And when we collect number three, the fourth one is just to the left slightly, but just directly in front of us again. And number five, well, guess what that's going to be? To the right this time, just to the right, just a little bit. We're going to be entering this goddamn delicious looking cinema, cinema room. And the sixth one is just between the seats right here, or just on top of this sort of first seat. And the seventh one is directly in front of us again. And then what we can do from here, we can just simply turn around. So we're going to head to the left just slightly. And it's going to be at the other end of this big old bass boy bad bitch speaker. Turn to the left a little bit again to find number nine. Sort of up the walkway. And then number ten, if you go to the left again, and it's going to be just behind these seats. So, so go over the seats, duck down, there it is then. So that is number ten. Number 11 is directly in front of us. And by the way, what do you call a fly with no wings or legs? A roll! <laughs> They're getting worse. They're getting worse. Number 12 directly in front of us, by the way. But yes, they are getting worse. But hey, if you chose to watch this video, you knew what you were getting yourself in for. Letting yourself in for, even. Uh, go underneath this uh, table here, right between these chairs. That is where number 13 is. And then number 14 is directly in front of us again, just by the TV. So if we turn to the left once again, sort of turn directly around, it's going to be straight in front of us again, number 15. And then number 16, again, we go into the left, this time where it's going to be on the actual table itself, in between these chairs. And now we're heading into the kitchen, so this one is straight ahead. Number 18, turn to the left just slightly, and number 18 is going to be right there. Next, turn to the right. And it's going to be, again, directly in front of us. <laughs> Which is where they usually have been. Go to the left this time. And it's going to be on this kitchen counter. When we collect that, turn right the way around. Do a full 360 because it's going to be basically behind us in this sink. So that'll be number 21. Turn to the right and in the doorway is number 22. Number 22. And then... Just to the left, you can see it on top of the staircase, or sort of heading towards the staircase. Staircase. Close enough. That is number 23, though. Straight up is number 24. Just in case you couldn't see it. Huh. And now turn to the left. We're basically just sort of staying up in this uh, upstairs area right now. So it's sort of in the middle of this area. Number 25. Number 26, directly in front of us. What is it with this guy in the word pantry, by the way? The flies do like a pantry, I suppose. So straight down is number 27. Directly in front of us. <laughs> number 28, if we turn to the right slightly, it is going to be right there. And then number 29, if we turn to the right, it's basically going to be on the stairs now. Or just to the right of the stairs. Number 29, straight up. Number 30, 30. Straight up again, number 31. This time we're actually going to head down, so make sure to go down this time. And directly in front of us is number 32. And finale, number 33 is directly in front of us, just before the cinema screen once again. Who's rich enough that's living in this bloody mansion because it looks goddamn delicious and I want it I want it I want to be rich well there is only fans I suppose although I'd have to pay people to see that so we'd, we'll scrap that now we're on to the next level anyway it is the wise fly and we are on to level six these remaining levels seem to uh, be getting a bit shorter where we sort of need to collect a little bit less but this one is a very small map so uh, keep up, man! <laughs> but the first one is directly in front of us anyway. 
And turn directly to your left, and you're going to see it by this sign. This time we're heading to the left again, so go around the sign, keep going around, and it's going to be in front of this uh, little Chinese-looking yum-yum bit. Here we go, straight on, it's going to be number four out of seven. I haven't got time to tell a joke, by the way, in this one. Uh, go to the left this time, and we're sort of heading behind it now. Behind this little shack. That's number five. Number six, turn directly to your left, and you will see number six straight in front of you. And number seven, lasto, but not listo, is turning to your left, basically going directly behind you again, and it's going to be in the middle of this. Yummers! Ah, okay, screw it, since we're at the end of the level. What goes, snap, crackle, and pop? A firefly with a short circuit. Way! Hamlerious, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so, there's that one. So that was a very quick and easy one. Now we're on to the stubborn fly. I know too many people like this. Uh, people, not flies. A lot of stubborn people. Again, a very, another very short area, this one. So, directly in front of us. Like, literally in front of us. You don't have to turn around. I don't know what the hell I started doing then. Apologies. <laughs> Uh, but there we go, and number two is directly in front of us to the left. Problem is, if you go too high, it starts flying backwards, so, you know, try not to go too high. Number three, turn to your left, basically behind you, and it's going to be on the floor. Luckily, there's no guys with small todgers out in this level, that's very nice. Uh, number four to the left, just by the door. <laughs> number five to the left slightly, that's where you'll see it. Although it would have been a hell of a decoration, wouldn't it? Flying towards small Todger. Which one's bigger? Me or the Todger? Turn to the left again. Sort of behind you. And number six will be right there. Number seven directly in front of us on the floor. Maybe they should do it in Life of Fly 2. Make all decorations and make it hilarious. Number eight if we turn to the left. And basically you're behind us once again. That's where you'll see number eight on the floor. And then number nine, just to finish it off, if we turn around and go up, sort of by the towels, is number nine. And that is that level done. And since we got a little bit of time, which fly makes movies? Steven Spielberg! Aha, you get it? Steven, Steven Spielberg? Bug? And he has the face of a bug? <laughs> That's probably not it. I just made that last one up. Sorry. Don't sue me. So, welcome to the Desperate Fly. Things are looking a bit desperate. We're looking like we're in that hanging body room again. And there's a noose on the left, if you can see it. So, that's a bit weird. But, as we begin, straight in front of us there. And number two is going to be to the left. You can see it in the distance, sort of just on the floor. So, this one, we've got a couple more to collect. But the room is a lot more spread out. So, we've got a lot of time to chill. And a lot of time to say, hey, how you doing? So there's number two, this time we go into the left, and just on the floor you can see it will be number three out of sixteen. She came back late. Her flights become longer day by day, and she was tired all the time. From here, take an immediate right, and you can just see it in between these sort of uh, bits of wood, this crate thing right here. That's number five. Number six then is going to be just below us on this chair. So grab that. Number six then will be in between these chairs. Again, sort of straight on. So make sure to be grabbing this bad boy. Number seven then is going to be to the right and up slightly. So there it is. It might be a bit tricky to sort of get your bearings on that one, but there it is. Number nine, go to the right and you're going to see it directly in front of us. And then number nine is going to be direct in front of us again. By the way, how do you make a firefly happy? Cut off its tail and it will be delighted. <laughs> Get it delighted because it doesn't have a light on anymore. <laughs> Funny. So number 11 to the right. <clears throat> Excuse me. To the right. Uh, just up on this box. 
Oh man. Number 12 to the right. Very much so, and up. And that will be number 12. We're sort of getting into noose territory now, which is quite creepy. In fact, that's where we're heading next. So to the right slightly. Number 13 is right in this noose. This is a very, um... It's got a lot more going on than airy, if you want to use your imagination for that. Number 14 to the right slightly, and a little bit below us again. That's number 14. Really want to know the backstory. Who... Who's the one that came up with these levels? They just got like 12 people to go, right, th th tell us your feelings right now. And some people got a bit creeped out. Number 15, though, is directly in front of us and just up a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, tell me how you're feeling right now. This is how I'm feeling in a room with nooses. <gasps> okay, well, let's talk, buddy. Let's talk. So that's number 15. Number 16, if we go to the right very much slightly, you will see it just off in the distance. And number 16 out of 16 will be yours. On to next one. Happiness might be waiting around the next corner already. Welcome to the Naive Fly. Now, I don't know if they put Naive in the bedroom of a little girl because little children are naive. I tell you what, I know a lot of adults like that as well, so it's not just kids. So, again, it's a small area, but it's a lovely bedroom. I, I'm going to pinch some ideas for my daughter's bedroom, to be honest, from this. But the first one is, as usual, right in front of us. So, we ain't missing that one. We've got 14 to collect. Straight in front of us and on the floor a little bit is number 2. So there we go. Nice chalkboard. Big, weird Toy Story teddy bear. That's a massive boy. Number 3 then is directly in front of us, just behind this chair leg. Might have been a bit tricky to see. And then what we're going to do, number 3, we're just going to carry on and there's a left here. So let's take this. Take the left, head up and out, and you can see it basically right in front of you. So there's that one. Number four then is again directly in front of us, just on the floor, on top of the carpet. By the way, what do you call a fly that can dance? A jitterbug. Yeah. Number six is <laughs> go up, and it's on the uh, chest of drawers right here, next to Unicorn and Fat Robot, Big Hero 6, that thing. Number seven then, turn around, sort of to the right. And it's going to be on this uh, vanity table. See, I know my stuff. Makeup table, vanity table. I am lady. Or I know many ladies with one. Number eight, turn to the right slightly. And it's just above this big creepy ass teddy bear. The eyes just scream. Somebody's watching me through a camera. Uh, <laughs> number nine then, go up. And it's going to be in the crib. Yeah, that's number nine. Number ten, then. Turn to the right very so slightly, and it's directly in front of us again. Uh, number eleven is directly in front of us again. She's room. She's room. That's a hell of a name. You could have called it her room, but she's room will do. It makes total sense, right? Uh, so that's number eleven. Number twelve is again directly in front of us. To the right ever so slightly, next to the lamp. On top of this nice-looking kitchen cooking play ting then if we head to the right uh, number 13 is going to be on this window now whatever house this is I really want it so if anyone would like to donate a couple of hundred thousand pounds to me I'd be more than happy to take it off your hands more than happy to do that anything to help you out you know and go to the right and it's going to be basically where the uh, baby's cot is or crib or whatever you, wherever you come from, it's going to be in front of that crib cot. And that's going to be 14 out of 14. On to next one. Those have been the last words of Larry, the naive fly, before he was crushed by the hands of Timmy, the small human child. Rest in peace, Larry. And we're about six minutes now coming up to the end. So we are now we have now gone from a, a young girl's bedroom to a pirate ship, the adventurous fly. 
So the first one, as you can see, is on the right this time. Decided to mix things up and not put it straight in front of us. That's what the first one is. Now, this seems like it can be quick, but it's going to be uh, another slow one. The room is a lot bigger than you thought. So we're heading to, to the left, and it's on the table. Very tricky to see that one because of the white tablecloth, but it's on the table, so that's number two. Number three is to the right slightly by the window, which is a lot easier to see. We'll go ahead, pick that bad boy up. Number four is to the left ever so slightly. And then we'll be turning around, going to the left, and it's going to be on the window number five. Then, once we're done with that, number six is going to be slightly to the left again. And by the way, how do fireflies start a race? Ready, steady, glow! Ah! Number seven, turn to your left quite a while away, and it's on the table again, on top of this box. Ready, steady, glow, super funny. Up onto the candle, just up above you, is number eight. <laughs> and then if you go to the right and keep climbing, it's going to be just under this lampshade. Oh, number nine. Number ten is going to be to the right, and if we start heading back down, it is on the table with a yo-ho-ho -ho and a bottle of rum. Well, close enough to it. It's on the chair anyway. To go to the left this time, and we'll see number 11 at plain as day. Next to the, uh, no, ho, 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 bottle of rum. And for Z finale, turn to the left, and it's going to be on top of this cannon, 12 out of 12, and on to next one. This is my life as the most adventurous fly of all time. On to the celebrating fly now. Ah, uh, just a quick one. Why did the firefly keep stealing things? He was light fingered, <laughs> and that means two things. You can't. You can. You can only go heavy fingering. By the way, damn, we're on about flies. Sorry, sorry. So as we start anyway, the <laughs> the first one is directly in front of us again. Light fingered stealing. Yeah, you you get the joke anyway. Funny. So we. Go to the right ever so slightly, into the living room now. This very um, 70s-esque seeming living room. Very cozy, but the wallpaper screams no to me anyway. Uh, to the left ever so slightly is going to be sort of close to this chair. So once this is collected, stay on the course. We're basically going in between the Christmas tree and the chair now. You can just see it next to the Christmas tree. Number four out of 20, mate. So, number five is going to be directly in front of us on this broken... I mean, maybe it is a 1970 setting. Anyway, I prefer nowadays. Uh, again, just to the left ever so slightly is going to be number six on this bit of wood. And then if we turn to the right ever so slightly again, that's number seven next to the lamp. Then we, what we're doing is going behind the settee now. So keep going. And obviously there's going to be a little right that we can take now. That's where number eight is. And then what we can do is just head directly up from there. So keep flying up because we can't go straight. And number nine is going to be in front of us on the settee arm. Number nine, uh, number ten, ever so slightly to the right. I don't know, when I say British words, I wonder if Americans get confused. <laughs> uh, to the right ever so slightly as well. And that's number 11. Like when I say cot and seti and, you know, crap like that. Anyway, to the left, again, ever so slightly, is the number 12 out of 28. And number 13, if we head to the left this time, it's going to be just behind this pillow. Yeah, see? Confusing, trying to throw us off the game now they are. Number 14, go to the left again ever so slightly. I mean, to be honest, the British and Americans just butt heads all the time in terms of uh, words and stuff. But I'm not going to get into it. We'll argue about that later. Left ever so slightly again for number 15. Even British and British people argue about words they've never heard of. Uh, left ever so slightly again for number 16. Number 16. 
And then from here, what we can do is go straight on. And you can just see in the distance. Might have been a bit tricky with the uh, fireplace going, but it is straight in front of us. Coming up now, roughly about five minutes away now from ending the game. So straight ahead of us once again is going to be number 18 out of 28. Merry Christmas, you guys. In February. Number 19 to the le uh, left slightly that is going to be number 19 out of 28. Just by this Christmas tree. And then number 20 is directly in front of us. Then when you grab this one, what we'll be doing is heading to the left. Let's so go to the left and you'll see it again right in front of us. When you grab this, once again, we're going to be going to the left. And again, it's going to be, you know it, directly in front of us. I hope those words are etching your mind for a day or two. Because they're etching in bloody mine. <laughs> so, this is number 22 out of 28 anyway. And then straight in front of us once again, just underneath the open wardrobe. Then number 24 is going to be, you guessed it, you can just see it off in the distance, straight in front of us, number 24. Go to the left ever so slightly, and you're going to see it directly in front of us. <laughs> Man, how many times have I got to say that? I should have put a count meter on for that one, shouldn't I? How many times have I said directly in front of us? <laughs> That's number 25. Three left to go to the left. More towards the left now, and it's sort of under this coffee table. That's number 26. Number 27 is again just in front of us between the settee and the chair. And then head right and up on the chair. Once again, that is number 28 out of 28. And come on, baby, final level. So I am genuinely wondering, how have you guys... Uh, what do you guys thought of this game so far? Because Aerie seemed to be a bit less of a grind, even though it was a bit of a grind. Yeah, Life of Fly is very, very chilled out, and the music and everything's brilliant. But I'm... Uh, Oof, it's it, I'm feeling like it is a bit more of a grind, but that's just my opinion. So, last level then, the Foraging Fly. And it's a nice way to end a level, nice room. And it is, obviously, as normal, straight in front of us is number Unos. Oneos. Un. Straight in front of us again is number 2 out of 28. Number 3 is to the right, and it's just by the chalkboard, more of an immediate right. That one is. Number four, then, is if we turn to the left, and it's going to be just underneath these desks. Trying to throw us off the game again, they are. EpiXR. So, go to the right this time. And it's by the windows and the taps. And go to the right so slightly again, and it's straight in front of us. So go to the right slightly, head down, and it is on the floor. Once again, if we head to the right, it's going to be underneath these desks. <laughs> Once again, we're almost there. I can taste it. So when we grab that, turn to the right ever so slightly again, and stay underneath these desks. Number nine. Number 10 is directly in front of us again, so do not move. Do not move from your current position. Number 10, number 11 then is, hey, you guessed it, straight in front of us again. That's mad, isn't it? Number 12 then is once again directly in front of us. And if you're looking for the number 13, it means we're going to the right and it's up on the chalkboard. By the way, quick one. Eat shit. A billion flies can't be wrong, you know. 
And <laughs> that was the final joke. So go to the right, and sort of behind you, it's next to this statue right here, of this bust, as it prefers to be called. Number 15, uh, directly to the left, uh, next to this open window. <laughs> and if we go left again, we're going in through the doorway into the next room, and it's in front of us again. So yeah, that was the last crew joke. Eat shit, a billion flies can't be wrong. Oh, they got a point, but shit tastes like shit. So, <laughs> you know, it's not it's not the best, like. So there is number 17 then. It was directly in front of us. This time we're heading to the left, immediate left. And there it is, straight in front of us. And if we go to the left again, number 18 is going to be just sort of next to this painting. Bit of a tricky one. Tricky out one, anyway. So now head slightly right and fly up, and it's very hard to see because of the white wall, but it is on top of this uh, sort of whatever the hell you want to call it. Wardrobe, what? not wardrobe, whatever. Anyway, turn left. Number 21 is going to be on the floor, in, more in the middle of the room. <laughs> Number 22 is to the left slightly in between these stools. Number 23 is in, just in front of us to the right slightly again. And then we're going to be led, heading left from here. And that's number 24. And then we're going to be taking an immediate right. We're heading back out of this room now. And it's, it's just in front of us again, close to the desk with the bust. That's number 25. Number 26 is to the right again. Hard to see, but it's in between the bust and the other items there. Hard to see because of the white wall. Head to the right is number 27 next to the blackboard again. And number 28, and the ending is done in front of these doors. So, uh, that's it. That is literally it then, guys and gals. By the way, some we've all eaten shit at one point in our life. Whether we've uh, changed a, a nappy or a diaper or anything like that, we've all eaten a shit, so we know what it feels like uh, and tastes like. But anyway, so thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. I hope... This game was enjoyable. I hope the guide helped as well. And that we had a laugh, as we always do. Apologies about the crap jokes. They were just terrible, but such is life. <laughs> so don't forget, of course, to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Check me out on all my socials, Twitter, Patreon, Instagram. The big shout-out to TimG84 and everyone else for continuing to support the show on Patreon. And I'll see you in the next one anyway, guys and gals. Big love.